nazywam się Andrzej Siemaszko, jestem dyrektorem Krajowego Punktu Kontaktowego Programów Badawczych Unii Europejskiej. Jestem organizatorem konferencji Tydzień Innowacyjnych Regionów Europy, czyli WIRE 3, WIRE 2012. Chciałem Państwu przedstawić naszych gości. Klara Delatore, dyrektor z Dyrektoriatu Badań i Innowacji z Komisji Europejskiej. Lambert van Nisteroy, członek Parlamentu Europejskiego, sprawozdawca odpowiedzialny za przygotowanie funduszy strukturalnych właśnie pod kątem synergii z, z obszarem badań innowacji. Pani Irena, tak? Iwona, Iwona Wendel, minister, zastępca ministra w Ministerstwie Rozwoju Regionalnego w Polsce. I pan marszałek Marek Sowa, marszałek województwa małopolskiego. Proszę państwa dwa słowa o konferencji, więc konferencja dyskutuje najbardziej chyba teraz ważne w tym momencie zagadnienia dotyczące synergii pomiędzy funduszami strukturalnymi a programami badawczymi. Taki program badawczy najważniejszy w Unii Europejskiej jest nazwany Horyzont 2020. Ten program ma mieć 80 miliardów euro. Ale okazuje się, że po stronie funduszy strukturalnych jest teraz wyraźna decyzja, czy wyraźny kierunek spowodowania, żeby znacząca część, 25% funduszy strukturalnych było też przeznaczone na badania i innowacyjność. Czyli w skali Europy mówimy o podobnej kwocie, powiedzmy też 80 miliardów, które mogłyby być przeznaczone na, na ten obszar. Debata tutaj ma, ma wypracować najlepsze instrumenty, naj, naj, najlepsze pomysły, jak użyć tych, tych olbrzymich funduszy właśnie dla dobra rozwoju, dla dobra rozwoju regionów, bo, bo mówimy w sumie o, o tej polityce innowacyjności realizowanej na poziomie regionów. Także to jest jeden z tych głównych tematów, które tu będziemy właśnie w Krakowie debatować. Dlaczego Kraków? Dlatego, że jest to region, który się rozwija bardzo dynamicznie, region, w którym za, zaimplementowano już znaczącą część funduszy strukturalnych, ale nie tylko z krajowych środków. To jest region, gdzie, gdzie pewnie już, już środki rzędu pół, pół miliarda euro zostały wbudowane w sferę badań innowacyjności. Także te doświadczenia Krakowa też posłużą temu, żeby lepiej zaplanować, zoptymalizować tą, tą, tą wielką yy, strategię, którą teraz mamy przed sobą. Proszę Państwa, to zacznijmy może właśnie od, od tej strony polskiej. Panie Marszałku, czy to prawda, że, że Kraków i województwo małopolskie jest takim beneficjentem, że, że, że no czujecie, że to się zmienia wszystko. Także bardzo proszę. Ja myślę, że wszyscy w Polsce czujemy, że się bardzo szybko nam zmienia perspektywa. W Małopolsce mamy do dyspozycji gdzieś już około 15 miliardów złotych. Ja sobie szybko wyliczam oczywiście, że żeby to było osiągnąć wskaźnik 25% to Powinniśmy mieć grubo ponad 4 miliardy przeznaczone tylko właśnie na te nowe technologie, na innowacje. Z samej innowacyjnej gospodarki, o czym Pan już wspomniał, jest kwota przekraczająca pół miliarda euro, więc to jest jeden z najlepszych wskaźników w skali kraju. I myślę, że te inwestycje, które tutaj realizujemy, czy Małopolski Park Technologii Informacyjnych, Park Life Science, czy miasteczko multimedialne, ale szereg innych inwestycji realizowanych również z programu regionalnego, czy z kapitału ludzkiego, jak choćby Centrum Instytut Informatyki w Akademii Górniczo-Hutniczej, czy zaplecze dla węzła wiedzy i innowacji w zakresie zrównoważonej energii, czyli projektu pozyskanego wspólnie z partnerami europejskimi przez Akademię Górniczo-Hutniczą dwa lata temu. Są dowodem na to, że ten kierunek, który obraliśmy 5 lat temu, przygotowując się właśnie do obecnej perspektywy finansowej, był dobry, bo to pokazuje, że tak naprawdę jesteśmy w stanie dzisiaj szukać partnerstwa, o czym w pierwszej części był bardzo duży apel, aby właśnie współpracować, szukać partnerstwa, żeby stać się przeciwwagą i wykorzystać cały ten potencjał, który jest w Europie. Ja nie mam żadnych wątpliwości, że, że u nas w Krakowie, w Małopolsce ten potencjał jest wyjątkowo duży. 
Pani minister, czy, czy, czy rzeczywiście polskie doświadczenia z tego okresu programowania można tak przenieść łatwo w następny okres i, i czy, czy taka olbrzymia reorientacja, która by nastąpiła, czyli trochę z tego nie, nie budować tyle, czy to hasło profesora Buzka, które nieraz powtarzamy, że mniej betonu, a więcej wiedzy i badań innowacyjności. Czy takie, taki wyraźny zwrot w funduszach strukturalnych Pani już obserwuje, planując tę następną perspektywę? No tak, muszę się z tym zgodzić w całej rozciągłości. Po pierwsze, w, tym, w tej perspektywie finansowej potrafiliśmy wykorzystać środki europejskie na to, żeby zakopać przepaść, troszeczkę chociaż, tak? Bardzo, nas, bardzo duża przepaść nas dzieliła między naszymi ośrodkami naukowo-badawczymi, a, a zachodnimi. Oczywiście mieliśmy kłopoty ze stykiem nauki i biznesu, nad czym od kilku lat bardzo intensywnie pracujemy, przede wszystkim w programie Innowacyjna Gospodarka. I w dwóch priorytetach, które wcześniej realizowało Ministerstwo Nauki i Szkolnictwa Wyższego, dzisiaj NCBR, który świetnie sobie radzi z łączeniem nauki i biznesu, z komercjalizacją badań. Czy w przyszłości mniej na infrastrukturę? Wydaje się, że tak, dlatego że obszary finansowania, tak zwane ring fencing, wskazują na, w projektach dotyczących polityki spójności jednoznacznie na to, że na obszar innowacji, badania i rozwój Będziemy musieli włącznie z dwoma innymi celami tematycznymi, czyli nowoczesnymi technologiami ICT oraz niskoemisyjną gospodarką przeznaczyć co najmniej 50% wszystkich środków. To znaczy według naszych wstępnych kalkulacji, że w Polsce prawdopodobnie będziemy przeznaczać na ten cel około 36 do 38% wszystkich środków. To jest znaczący wzrost. I przede wszystkim koncentrujemy je w dotychczasowych doświadczeniach, przy czym nie będziemy już e, lokować środków na, no, na nowe powstające na przykład parki technologiczne, inkubatury przedsiębiorczości i tak dalej. Będziemy e, koncentrować je tam, gdzie one już dzisiaj były dobrze wykorzystane. W taki sposób, żeby wzro wzrosła konkurencyjność z jednej strony e, nauki polskiej, a z drugiej strony polskiej gospodarki. Dziękuję bardzo. So I, I think that this Polish experiences can be used, of course, uh, for defining the, the, the future for the next, next financial perspective. And so the, the first step is, was done by the Commission. So the proposal for Horizon uh, is, is uh, on, on the table. And, and Horizon is also uh, offering new, new possibilities and, and is, is open for, for this strong integration with innovation. So, so could you, in, in a uh, few words, explain this, this major transformation of, of the framework program? Thank you, our, thank you, Andrei. Our, uh, indeed, the Horizon 2020 is um, um, adding a new dimension in our uh, programs, and this is why we've put together the former framework program, the former competitiveness and innovation program, and the EIT, precisely to show that education research innovation are all part of the same uh, of the same block um, uh, within horizon 2020 we have uh, we have built in the mechanisms as we were saying this morning that will help uh, a better synergy with the structural funds which have been so successfully used uh, in, uh, in, in Poland, and in particular in this region. And there, you, I'm sure you've seen the Commission proposal that we have um, uh, some places, for example, to continue doing linking of uh, uh, institutions, emerging institutions, sets of excellence with institutions which are, uh, dare I say, more leaders in a certain field. I was happy to hear the minister saying that we are not uh, investing in new, uh, in new uh, technology parks, but you are investing there where you see that there is a potential. That's, that's, uh, that's very interesting. Our commissioner said this morning in, the, in, her, in, her, uh, in her address uh, that we were determined to unlock the, the uh, excellence potential wherever it is in Europe. And this is explicitly stated in Horizon 2020 proposals. There we have the European Research Area chairs, uh, whereby we are, we are trying to create the, 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 the good environment to attract within the academic milieu uh, the excellence. Um, we have 
to improve also our communication and it's this built in, in our in our uh, program but moreover more generally to come back to your innovation point we have uh, designed the mechanisms in a way that innovation is always present has necessarily to be addressed in the program in the projects that will be, will be carried out within the the uh, societal challenges namely and of course in the part of uh, industrial leadership we leave a little bit aside it is necessary it but it's not the main component of the basic uh, science part thank you very much uh, i think now the very important person in the european parliament so rapporteur for 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 this area of, of uh, research innovation and, and, and uh, uh, this networking uh, synergy with, with structural uh, found. Uh, there is a group of such a person, so Lambert van Nistelrooy, but also uh, Jan Olbrich, so, so uh, member of European Parliament from, from this region, from Silesia. And, and so working together, you, you develop some, some new ideas for, for this networking, for, for developing innovation in, in all European Union and, and of course using available resources so for, from both sides, Horizon and, and, and also cohesion policy. Yes, thank you very much for, for, for being here and inviting the Parliament in, in this, this stage of debate. The Parliament has now co-decision for the first time under the Lisbon Treaty. So we, we can also bring ideas to the table. First and for all, uh, the point is that, that we underuse, absolutely underuse, the capacity of Eastern Europe. And if you see that 90% of the research money is going to the old member states, this is unacceptable. This is no longer acceptable because what we put into the, uh, to the Lisbon Treaty about the balanced Europe. This is territorial cohesion, as we say. How to change this? To, to change today, I, I start my speech to say you are the game changers. We have to play it, change the game. Look to the football. Of course, if you don't uh, change your systems, you will lose. You have to, to do the things that go right and to make them stronger as you do with your, your thematic parks, etc. But if things don't work, you have to change it. So this is the fact that uh, Europe has uh, two problems. The first problem is that we have a lot of knowledge, we sell it all over the world, but we don't take on board the new industries of the future. A lot of products are made and developed in, in other parts of the world. This is like a free-floating intelligence, and we allow this. So what the answer should be, there should be that we are so attractive to combine research also in Poland with new way of producing services and producing goods. And my proposal today is to, uh, to say, okay, we have to combine the best, for instance, in nanotechnology, or the best in the chemical industry, or the best in things like the bioeconomy, the best players in Europe together. And a part of the money that Europe gives to the regions, the regional uh, funds, cohesion funds, should be put on the shelf to find your partners and not just to exchange but to invest together to take for instance i'm coming from the netherlands to take from the universities and for the knowledge institute from the netherlands for a longer period seven or 14 seven or 14 years professors here and the, the a structural exchange between uh, the uh, knowledge uh, institutions and and the companies I want to have a really center of excellence. If in 20 years uh, a company is looking around the world, where shall we go to have added value to, have to earn money? That they say, let's go to Krakow, because they are the top specialists in this and that uh, uh, sector. This is the way we have to look at it, and not to give everybody an envelope of money and say, good luck, do your best, because we win one match but we lose the competition. And this is, this is the thing that we have debated in the parliament and together with Jan Albrecht coming from uh, the, 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 the Silesian region, in fact, we have put forward a, a couple of, of measures to make uh, the European integration, the European cooperation, 
not as something that you like to do and go to visit some region and then come back and, and start your normal work. No, we have to integrate in these top activities. You use it, and I mean this for a lot of sectors, you use it or you lose it. This is the thing that Europe should realize. We don't, can't afford to have these debates and debates. We have to change our instruments. And that's why wire and the outcome of wire will be used in our uh, second part of the year in which the Parliament brings their ideas forward and the negotiations that we have with the Council that are the ministers of the states on basis of the, um, the proposals that were made by the European Commission. Dziękujemy. Proszę Państwa, teraz pytania z sali. Bardzo proszę. To tak, tak, czyli co, nie będzie żadnego pytania? Czy, czy Państwo wolą jakieś może jeszcze indywidualne rozmowy? Ok, so they will, will ask for some individual talks and... and. To, to jeszcze raz, żeby podsumować, znaczy nadchodzi olbrzymia zmiana w, rzeczywiście w, w przeznaczeniu funduszy strukturalnych, także że one w, w angielskiej nazwie mają właśnie, to, że to są fundusze spójności, fundusze, które powinny zapewniać tą, tą spójność w Unii Europejskiej. Dzisiaj one są rzeczywiście trans, prze, przekazywane coraz bardziej w tą sferę badań i innowacyjności. Także, że powinny zmienić nazwę, nie zmieniają, ale ta orientacja jest wyda, wy, wy, wyraźna. I to oznacza, że sfera badań i rozwoju w Polsce, jako największy beneficjent tych, tych funduszy strukturalnych, powinna być teraz bardzo aktywna w definiowaniu, w programowaniu tych funduszy strukturalnych. Także to, jest, to jest okres bardzo wytężonej pracy, żeby te olbrzymie no, miliardy euro, które teraz są przekazywane w, ty, w kierunku na wzmocnienie tej sfery zostały wykorzystane w optymalny sposób. Mamy sporo dobrych doświadczeń, pewnie znalazły się też, też i, i nie takie w pełni optymalne rozwiązania, więc bazując na tych doświadczeniach spróbujmy zdefiniować przyszłość. I to, co, co tutaj Lambert Bannister rzucił, że, że, że mamy teraz w rękach, my jesteśmy tym, tym Najważniejszym ogniwem, żeby zdefiniować, jak, jak te, tą naszą e, przyszłość teraz e, no, za, zaprogramować, zaplanować. Dziękuję bardzo i zapraszam do tych indywidualnych spotkań. Good afternoon. My name is Jacek Kuźnicki and I, am, I have a pleasure to be a moderator of this session. I would like to welcome all of you, especially the speakers and the repertoire. And the technician support, thank you very much. Well, uh, there is a small change of the program. The person who should conclude will conclude, but very shortly, but will also give the presentation after me. So Stefan Weyers will have a five minutes uh, as a second presentation about the RecPod. So now I would like to start. To start. So this is a, a subject of our session. And what we are going to talk about are about the RECPOT funding, what is now and what could be in the future, about success stories of centers of excellence, of those who receive the funding of the RECPOT, and about the measures of excellence, such as research and innovation. And I decided to use my five minutes, which will start shortly now, to present to you the story about my institute, which is called International Institute of Molecular and Cell Biology. We started our activities in 1999 with the empty building, support from the government at the amount of 400,000 euro, and a law which gave us a lot of privileges but also obligations. As you can see, the first two years were very difficult, but then we started to have some funding from domestic sources and from the fifth framework programs. The turning point was the status of Center of Excellence, which we received in 2003, because of thanks of because thanks of this type of funding, we were able to have new contacts with the EU partners, and then together with them, we successfully applied for a lot of different grants within the six framework program. So the total amount of money we received as a small institute was about 2.3 million euro. And it even helped us to be more successful within additional programs such as FP7, and you can see two of our young group leaders received recently ERC grant, European Research Council grants for junior researchers, each for 1.5 million. We also have a RECPOT, HealthProt, 
proteins in health and disease. And we have also additional funding. Our group leaders have additional funding, such as from Howard Hughes Medical Institute, from the Wellcome Trust, from EMBO, and so on. So we are successful in terms of money. And as you can see, the institute was able to grow. We can grow in terms of budget, but also in grow because of the number of people involved, number of contacts with research partners, and also in terms of other measures of successes in research, about which I'll tell you a few words later. RECPOT, which we received in 2009, allowed us to employ 14 more people. Most of them from, were from, not from Poland. And thanks to that, we published 49 papers. And more importantly, we identified partners within the health pro project with whom we successfully applied for additional grants and we got additional money. So altogether, it was successful. But in terms of innovation, we were also able to get three patents applications. But the science is important. Even if we, want to, if we talk about innovations, the important thing is to have a very good basic research. And this shows the average impact factor of the publications, of the journals in which we publish. We started around four. We finish right now, 2010, 11, 12, around seven. So it's almost twofold. That's significant. And this is a basis for innovations. In summary, the institute now, more than 150 people, with published 458 papers and the budgets. We start with this 0.4 million, now it is 15-fold bigger. Thanks mostly of the European Union funding, but also other foreign sources. And this number I would like to point out, especially to politicians if they are here, this is the amount of money we spent for 12 years of activities, 41.8 million euro. From with empty building, no one employed, this is the money we spent for everything, furniture, equipment, chemicals, disposables, trips, and so on and so on. <clears throat> for this amount of money, one can create the institute, which is now in Poland, number one in molecular biology. At the time we got a center of excellence status, there were other 17 institutions coming, getting the same status, and all of them received similar amount of money, about 300, 400 euros. There were 18 of them within the new member states, but Totally, they received from EC 6 million euro. And they published this amount of papers. They, were 66, they received 66 uh, grants thanks of this collaboration. This shows that how much can be achieved with very little money, with the s s funding for Center of Excellences and with the RECPOT funding. Finally, I would like to show that we are ready all, not only for neurodegeneration studies, but also for euro. Thank you very much. And now I would like you to present your presentation. Yeah, okay. Yeah, th thank you very much. Um, uh, th this uh, presentation is, will be interleaved because I, I think it was, I was originally asked by the organizer also to introduce a bit of re review of uh, the program. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to do it uh, uh, right now. What was, after a couple of years looking back, uh, what was the experience with re research potential? What lessons did we learn? And just briefly recap. Uh, what it is about. Next, please. Okay. Okay. If we look into a nutshell on the program, what, what does it mean, research potential, and what was the original idea of that, I think it was about uh, a, a linking uh, excellent or potentially excellent research entities from the EU convergence region and also the outermost regions, uh, better to link them to European research uh, area and to European research networks. And the means was uh, upgrading research capacities and capabilities in a particular coherent package of dedicated measures. I will explain later on. I will not so much talk about the outermost region. These are actually the geographically disconnected territories, in particular islands like Canary Islands or uh, the French overseas territories in the Caribbean or in the Indian Oceans and some others who have particular problems. But as they did not bid so much onto our calls, I will keep that a little bit beside. On top of upgrading 
and developing research uh, capacities, um, we were looking, uh, we were targeting at the regional socio-economic development. So the, for that, creating a link between cohesion policy um, and uh, res research funding uh, policy, where we would consider the research centers and universities as regional innovation engines. Um, we have for the moment uh, four uh, kind of measures, the twinning where we have secondments, exchange of know-how, but also measures to improve the visibility of our beneficiaries. Then we have a recruitment of experienced researchers, but also technicians, in order to upgrade the human resources of these uh, research centers, and of course, a very strong equipment component. And just as a novelty in our current call that was just recently closed, there's a, a considerable package for IPR management and innovation capacity building. Recalling what is uh, the geographical criterion, who can benefit from that, you see on the map of Europe in red and in orange, these areas that we call the convergence regions, who are defined by a statistical criterion, uh, meaning they did not receive more than 75% of the average GDP of the EU 25 <laughs> in the year 2006. Financial distribution was in total 340 million. We are now just negotiating the last batch of these 340 million, which is in fact the biggest one, which is roughly 145. Uh, it's a support action. The runtime of a project is 36 months. Here you see some, uh, a slide where we re recapitulate a little bit uh, the incoming submissions and the history of the program. You see that we do not have only the main core, RecPod 1, which is the traditional research potential format with the four uh, measures, but we also had a call on a particular evaluation facility, which is called RecPod 2, we had international calls geared towards the Western Balkans and also the Mediterranean partner countries. As you see, there was a peak in, f in the year 2008, where 475 submissions came in. But this is a bit an anomaly, because there was a slight misunderstanding of the purpose of the call, particularly in Turkey, where many uh, organizations were submitting proposals just for the purpose of acquiring equipment and laboratory uh, infrastructure. Uh, but you see that we have a stable uh, incoming of proposals between 250 and around 300 per year. Uh, there was a slight uh, drop from the last year, although we doubled uh, the, the budget. You see here the development of the success rates. Um, there was a continuous drop of the success rates because we have, in fact, uh, changed the condition, we upgraded um, the project size, and this led to a fiercer competition and therefore to, to a drop of the success rate, which is now increasing because we have uh, just closed the evaluation of the call uh, with a, a duplicated budget where we will uh, fund projects for approximately 145 million over the next 12 months. Um, some milestones in the development of the program, so it was a continuous work of development where we, at certain moments, uh, adapted the program to new realities. For instance, it was seen that there was a need to upscale uh, the project size. Uh, after long discussion in our program committee, uh, we, we upscaled it up to 4 million in 2009, and we merged this evaluation work package as an optional facility into the main call. 2010, uh, we have tightened the conditions for partnering organizations and the significant size. So they have to provide some evidence that they have at least 10 permanent researchers and there must be at least three partnering organizations. We did 2011 an impact assessment by an expert group of 10 people. I will pick up on that a little bit later on. And then the last message. Uh, measure was actually to upscale the budget, the maximum budget of a project up to 5 million, and we added a mandatory IPR management innovation package. 
and the twinning was a little bit simplified. We just merged this activity of workshops, conference, and exchange of know-how to one twinning package that was formally distinct. Uh, we should not forget that we also had an international enlargement dimension. Two of the speakers afterwards will refer to that. We made two calls to the Western, for Western Balkans in particular, which was bearing food, and we can see that there was really the competi competitiveness of the Western Balkan research communities was significantly improved by such calls. Goran will speak about that later on. We also did a call at the benefit of Mediterranean partner countries in 2009, which will, Gaetano will speak uh, uh, about one case study later on, where we used a triangle of consortia from Mediterranean countries, EU, and EU convergence uh, regions. Uh, some lessons learned what were major achievements, where I pick up some elements from the expert group, but also uh, giving some input from point of view of the practitioner from my colleagues and myself who were working on that program over a couple of years. Turned out that research potential has been successfully in an entrance gate for research group from less favored regions to EU FP7 projects and networks. Some of them will demonstrate that they successfully joined technology initiatives and platforms and uh, it was demonstrated that uh, these projects were able to turn the tide from the brain drain to brain gain in some particular cases. And sometimes it helped to support institutional transformation reform process within the organization and the strategic repositioning. Infrastructures, new laboratory equipment made them more competitive and more attractive for other partners. And uh, we developed sustainable partnerships with top-class research institution, and also the visibility recognition was uh, strongly increased. There was also some kind of quality seal because the ones who were successfully bidding, uh, they increased also their visibility and competitiveness at national level, and some of them managed to liaise successfully with regional stakeholders and the industry. Although there also were some challenges, there was high oversubscription, sometimes a bit uh, leading to disappointment. It was hard in some cases to attract really top class researchers from abroad and to retain them. It was also a challenge for the applicants to balance out the requirement of having a significant size versus, on the, on the one hand, versus the need of a certain scientific specialization uh, of excellent research groups within the parent organization. It was not always easy, easy to create the synergies that took place, but not systematically, and not always the opportunities for IPR management, industry involvement, and regional stakeholders were uh, adequately taken. And of course, as I said, from the outermost region, it was not so strong in terms of response. As you heard uh, in the foregoing session, it will not be continued in the same format uh, in uh, the Horizon 2020, but there's still a lot of work to do. We have to valorize on a large uh, portfolio of projects, and we will, of course, transfer the knowledge and this experience to the thematic programs of FP7 and Horizon and the regional policy and cohesion policy run by our colleagues in Giju Regio, and you will here in later sessions, something about stairways to excellence, the transfer of the objectives of this program into the cohesion policy, and uh, there are also some actions under Horizon 2020. So I'm already pinching too much time, so thank you for listening, and uh, the floor is to the projects now. Thank you. Thank you. Now I would like, thank you very much. Now I would like to go around Stenor to present. Ten minutes, and I will stand up, please. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, I would like to present uh, main achievements uh, of the record project, reinforcement of the research potentials of the Faculty of Technical Sciences in the field of post-silicon electronics. 
the Rekpot project uh, was uh, intended to Western Balkan uh, region, uh, particularly uh, the region of uh, Serbia. Uh, Post-silicon electronics uh, means uh, flexible organic electronics uh, and uh, nanoelectronics. And uh, um, just uh, to have um, insight uh, what uh, the main topic of the project is, um, could you imagine, uh, uh, for example, uh, display which can be rolled uh, and put uh, in the pan uh, or for example, your screen, uh, the mobile phone can be bent uh, and put in the pocket. Uh, the robotic uh, arm, which have sensors around uh, every fingers and so on. So uh, the uh, Apostat project, this project is a key enabler uh, for entering uh, in this field uh, for uh, my group and uh, our faculty. We had uh, strong expertise in embedded systems, uh, microelectronics, uh, robotics, uh, applied, applied physics, but uh, these projects uh, enable us uh, to uh, be reinforced uh, in the field of uh, nanomaterials, uh, flexible and organic electronics. Um, and uh, uh, this project uh, is help us uh, to achieve, to reach our vision uh, to be uh, to have a uh, high position among the best in EU uh, in this field. Uh, stimulating research potential of uh, the Faculty of Technical Sciences by reinforcement of the human resources and the equipment infrastructure uh, also uh, will improve us uh, and uh, to, to be attractive region and attractive institution uh, uh, for new uh, projects uh, uh, and uh, in this uh, high, high technology area. Um, objectives defined in the action plan of this project was uh, increasing the knowledge base, uh, skill and experience uh, through transnational uh, two-way secondments uh, between our team and uh, six strategic uh, EU partners. Uh, reinforcement of the human potential through hiring, employment, uh, uh, free incoming experienced researchers. Uh, purchasing new research equipment, uh, knowledge exchange through organization of uh, two uh, international uh, workshops and three international conferences, and also increasing visibility uh, of our excellence or our uh, main results uh, through a wide range of uh, promotional and dissemination activities. Our networking partners are uh, from uh, Italy, Milan Polytechnic, um, Jorge Stefan Institute from Slovenia, uh, University of Catania uh, from Italy, uh, Institute of Sensory Decorator System of Austria, uh, University of, Ke of Chemnitz, uh, uh, Germany, and the company uh, Festo from Austria. And uh, you can see uh, in which field uh, they improve uh, our skills. In which ways? Uh, through uh, two-way secondments. Uh, you can see here uh, uh, some of um, the names of our members, uh, members of my team, uh, which uh, perform already uh, two-way secondments uh, uh, toward, uh, towards and between uh, our um, partners. And uh, for each of these secondments, uh, we uh, already prepared uh, templates, uh, file, uh, who sent that and that researcher, who is the new host in this institution, uh, certificate uh, which activities uh, have been performed uh, during that visit. And all signature, mine as a coordinator, are also uh, the uh, supervisor uh, within the uh, EU institution. Uh, in addition to this, we perform uh, up to now uh, almost uh, the half uh, spent uh, uh, half life uh, of the of the project, uh, ten short term training visits. Uh, our members uh, attended uh, fourteen international conferences, and we had uh, three invited lectures. The famous professor from USA, uh, Warren Oliver, 
professor and Dr. Nenad Marjanovic from CSEM uh, Switzerland and uh, uh, Mirjana Mirjanovic from EPFL uh, also Switzerland. And you can see uh, some uh, pictures from uh, that uh, um, invited lectures or uh, visits. Apart from this, uh, we employed three incoming experienced researchers uh, from UK, Australia, and uh, USA. And the main achievements of these researchers uh, are uh, in the field of uh, establishing first step in the cooperation uh, b between our institution and industrial sector, because all uh, our results and the achievements and prototypes are very practically oriented. Uh, together with me and uh, the management of the project, uh, experienced researchers uh, prepared some uh, new EPICEM project, and uh, you can see we obtained one uh, uh, EP7 with an initial training network, a uh, sensible project with uh, 91.4 uh, 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 points. And also, uh, we received the evaluation form uh, uh, for ICT, another project, uh, with 14.5 uh, points out of 15. Uh, also, um, one of the uh, incoming researchers developed a completely new uh, software tool for uh, modeling and simulation uh, flexible components. Uh, new research equipment is very important for us, and uh, uh, following uh, all uh, development cycle, uh, we uh, purchased um, in high performance computer cluster for time and memory consuming simulations and modeling. After that, uh, we should fabricate something. Uh, so we uh, purchased uh, new equipment, uh, Dematics materials deposition printer uh, for flexible substrate like paper or foils. Uh, and uh, after that, uh, equipment for characterization, uh, this is a uh, nano -identer. That equipment uh, helped us, and using that equipment, we fabricated uh, these uh, prototypes. Uh, you can see one rolled uh, sense, uh, angular position sensor. After that, uh, uh, the second picture is uh, antenna for new mobile phone generations, uh, resonator, uh, new, completely new platform for capacitive uh, position sensors, uh, induct inductors, uh, on, on foil, uh, we uh, there uh, these uh, prototypes um, and uh, achievements um, have been published in uh, five uh, leading international journals, peer review, up to now, and also we prepare now uh, two uh, patents. Uh, Additionally, we organized uh, two special sessions on international conferences, and uh, uh, almost one uh, month ago, we organized uh, one workshop in Noisad, Printed Electronics, Materials, Components, and Applications. And you can see some uh, photos from uh, this event. Uh, uh, I performed, my, my members performed a wide range of, of dissemination activities. Uh, you can see some uh, presentation of Apostar project uh, at the PhD student meeting, uh, processing and application ceramics. After that, uh, in the secondary school, uh, we attended more than uh, 150 uh, pupils uh, presentation of the new achievements, uh, our new achievements in the field of organic and flexible electronics. And also, every year in May, uh, in Ovisad, we organized a uh, science of festival, festival of science. And also, I uh, uh, had a, a lecture at, uh, devoted to the project uh, at uh, the Festival of Science. We uh, made a wide range of uh, promotional materials. And uh, uh, also, we are proud that uh, we are a member of uh, Organic Electronic Association, the, big, uh, uh, the biggest uh, association uh, in this field, in the field of organic electronics in the world. Uh, the National TV station, uh, Vojvodina, which cover uh, population uh, around 2 million of people, 
uh, broadcasted stories about the Apostle project uh, twice uh, up to now, and uh, that uh, performance uh, attract uh, so uh, attention uh, in wider community. And uh, we designed all steps uh, towards uh, uh, spreading our excellence and results uh, from the local uh, uh, level uh, through the regional, I mean regional of Vojvodina, uh, uh, through national, uh, Western Balkan country, and EU uh, uh, through uh, established channels of uh, our uh, partners. And. Uh, uh, at the end, uh, we uh, this project also initiates uh, uh, cooperation with the industrial sector. Uh, we already established collaboration with uh, Vlatacom company from Belgrade in the design of uh, flexible, uh, passive, and active RFID tags uh, for company uh, ICM Electronics in the field of robotics and uh, intelligent packaging. And uh, also with the company uh, a a uh, CD Systems uh, from Belgrade in the field of uh, uh, designing and fabrication of uh, um, labels uh, and sensors uh, for uh, meat and perishable packaging uh, who monitor expiring date uh, of the food. Uh, once again, I would like to thank uh, organizer for excellent organization of this event. Uh, also, uh, project uh, officer, uh, Dr. Stefan Weiss for uh, very, very uh, correct uh, cooperation and uh, I hope uh, we will continue in, in that direction. Thank you all for uh, once again. Thank you, Goran. Now it's time for the presentation by Luis Alvarez and Stella, please. Um, well, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I would like to thank you uh, again, the organizers and the European Commission for giving us the opportunity to tell you uh, something about a uh, Radian um, and about the LeafGate, that is the record project uh, we have started uh, at the end of last year. I'm Luis Alvarez and I am the CEO of Gradian uh, since 2008, that was the, the, the date of, of the board. Uh, first of all, what is Gradian? Uh, well, I have seen a lot of information about the uh, RECPO projects, and most of them are related to uh, universities or so public uh, research centers. Uh, Gradian is um, something different, or could be, uh, is the Galician Research and Development Center in advanced telecommunications. Uh, the story of Gradian started in 2008, in the, day, in the month of May. Uh, so we are um, um, a young organization, but uh, we have uh, the, the knowledge uh, or the background knowledge of the experience of more than 15 years from people from the Faculty of Telecommunications of the University of Vigo. Uh, we are a foundation, a non-for-profit uh, foundation, and um, part of the Board of Governors are very related to the industrial world. Um, companies like Telefonica or Vodafone, uh, Televis, uh, um, different companies, because uh, Grayan is very, very focused in transfer the, no the knowledge to the industry. Uh, talking about capital, uh, you can see that uh, most of the capital is private side. We have uh, participation from the regional government of Galicia and from the three universities uh, from Galicia. The main goals of the of the center is. Uh, as I have to say again, generate knowledge and transfer it to industry. Uh, sometimes be the r and department of the companies, uh, uh, especially when we are talking about SMEs. Um, something that, uh, well, in my, my, my former life was very related to the industrial uh, in a telecommunication company. And when I started to work in Gradian and, and very, very near to the university, I, I saw a lot of money, uh, some of them from the European Commission, but transformed it in some instruments or some products that uh, were on the shelves, on the faculties, and not on the industry being used to, to keeping, um, to, to being better, uh, competitive, okay? So one of the things is uh, uh, R&D, but uh, with a professional way. So focus on the results. Uh, 
I have to say, uh, I have to tell something about the history of Gradient because uh, the history of Gradient is very related to Recpot because we started applying for Recpot when we started uh, with the organization. Um, in 2003, there was a first uh, proposal from these uh, university groups to the regional government. Um, all the companies in our uh, Galicia uh, area was very interested in creating this organization. But the problem was that uh, in 2005, there was a change in the, in the party that was in charge of the government. So we have to start again um, trying to tell the people how was uh, the, why it was interesting to create a telecommunication center in, in Galicia. On December of 2007, there was the foundation, but the beginning of the activity was on 2008. We, f we, we, fi we finished the, this year even with uh, two contracts with the industry. Uh, on February, um, we applied for the first uh, record uh, with a proposal with name uh, Fox, Fox Law. I remember that it got more or less 13 points. We were very happy. We were very happy because it was very important for us uh, to go over the, the threshold, but it was not, not enough. On December this year, we apply again, uh, giant step, and um, we, we were more near that with 14 points this, uh, this, this time, but it was not enough again. So it's, it's very important you have to, 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 to repeat and, and to intend to try again, to try again. But uh, for us, what is was important is that um, the center cannot be only based on getting money from the European Commission. We have to be based on having a lot of contracts with the industry. The, the support of the European Commission, as you are going to see, is like um, a way um, for accelerate the center. Okay, but not is the only target for us. Well, um, 2008, uh, uh, we got. Uh, the result of this uh, leafgate project was 14.5 uh, points. Was, I think, is a very competitive call. Uh, I know. Um, we started working with the project at the uh, at the end of 2011. At the same time, we still uh, work with the uh, with the companies, and we apply for different uh, with different uh, projects, so to different calls of the. FP7, like uh, research for SME with uh, one success project, and now we, ha we are in negotiation under a, uh, for a project uh, about uh, satellite uh, communications. It's an IP project, very important and related to this. Talking about figures, uh, this year uh, we have a budget of about 4 million, more than 35 active contracts with the industry, and very important for us, uh, you can see the, the graph is the number of employees in Radian. We started in 2008, we end the year with 10, and now we are more than 62 employees, most of them research. Most of them, we are talking about 52, okay? It's a lot. Well, for us, uh, this is very important. Uh, I, I think all the calls from the European Commission is only, um, the calls only define some rules. You have to, to believe uh, on that. Uh, you have to believe on your roadmap. And this type of calls or this type of, of funds has to be a support for you, but not, not the goal for you, OK? Uh, for Gradian, uh, we have the same ambitious roadmap uh, style since uh, 2008. Uh, so we knew where uh, we wanted to be and to reach a world we needed. Uh, Will, time, effort, and, and resource. For us, report, as I said to you, is an accelerator. An accelerator. With a report, uh, we have uh, we can reach that in ten years. But with this support, I think uh, in six years we can arrive to be a center of excellence for multimedia, satellite, and processing. And um, very, very important this what, okay. The SOT provides a snapshot of your center, but uh, the SOT is uh, a management tool for you. It's not only for the record project. The SWOT is a, is a tool for managing your organization. So if the SWOT of your organization is the same that you use for the call 
probably you are going to be uh, near the success for that. We saw LeafGate, this, uh, the, the structure, and this is the idea of the LeafGate project for us, to, to grow in the strengths and the opportunities and, and less in weakness and, and threats. This is our action plan. You can see that the action plan is the result of applying uh, and studying the, the, the SWOT. One part is uh, personal exchange and knowledge sharing, um, human resource upgrade, well, hiring new researchers is going to be, is being very difficult and reset the, the equipment and, and technical events. And what are the difficulties we have been, well, we, the, the main difficult as uh, our project of officer knows because is hiring the people. It's incredible because everybody talks that we are in an economical crisis, we have a lot of people unemployed. Um, we are having a lot of difficulties to get uh, good people. I don't know if the problem is that, I don't know if you know where is Galicia, that this is the northwest of Spain. Uh, we have a, a place in Galicia that the name is Finisterrae. If we translate to English, it's the, the end of the war. So probably you can have a look at that. Uh, we have got hired three, uh, three people in, in eight months. Uh, but we have a lot of uh, reactions uh, from people, depending sometimes from because the money and sometimes because they are looking for a career plan. Um, we are a private organization, and some people incredible things that is uh, more uh, secure to go to a public university. Well, uh, and no more. Thank you very much. Thank you, Luis, for perfect timing. Uh, and now, Gorgos Spiroulis. Uh, good afternoon, also from me. Thank you very much for uh, uh, the invitation to present our uh, project here, a quote project. Actually, it's a new one. We started um, uh, this year, January. So I don't have to so many results, but I, I can tell you what we learned also for this and where <laughs> we will, would like to go. So this is the seed drug. This is uh, because of uh, you, Pat, uh, it is attributed to you, University of Patras due to its uh, excellence in uh, research uh, in the field of structural biology and pharmacology. And it holds for the uh, establishment of uh, uh, a center of excellence for structure-based uh, drug target characterization uh, at uh, the area of um, uh, uh, southeastern Europe. Uh, the budget was uh, uh, the total budget was 3.6 million of euros, and uh, with uh, easy contribution to 3.2, and with uh, unusually possibly high uh, budget for um, uh, research equipment. And this is the uh, CDRAC uh, website. You can learn uh, a lot about the activities, the people uh, are, uh, which are, uh, who are involved, and uh, the activities for the future activities. And uh, here are the people involved in the consortium for CDRAC at the University of Patras. They are coming from four, uh, from four departments of the University of Patras, Department of Chemistry, Biology, and the two uh, um, departments that started this uh, initiative, Department of Medicine, Department of uh, Pharmacy. And to have uh, an action plan uh, in uh, seven work packages. And what I would like to stress is that we got the uh, option of uh, ex uh, uh, post evaluation because we want to know uh, the right way to uh, conserve this uh, infrastructure and to proceed to the future. Uh, this is going to happen uh, um, at the end of the project, so the duration of the project is 42 months. And uh, the research ob uh, for the research objectives, we designed three modules. Uh, as I told you, it's a project for structural biology, uh, characterization of track targets. So the first uh, point is to get the target, the protein target, uh, to be studied. So we uh, designed the uh, C-Prot module, the C-Struct mo C module, where we uh, intend to study the structure, and the C-Farm module, where we have to see the, uh, uh, to study the, um, uh, to evaluate molecules with a, a potential uh, pharmacological um, value. 
And uh, for this, we build a network, a strong network with uh, many uh, national partners, uh, regional partners from uh, our area, uh, Bulgaria, for example, Turkey, and of course, many European centers of excellence uh, in the West Europe. And uh, the budget allocation that I mentioned before was uh, mainly to the structural activities of the project. And what we wanted to get, it was a modern, a unique, uh, powerful, uh, 700 megahertz NMR instrumentation, uh, which is uh, actually a tool for study proteins, uh, small molecules, and also other applications, suitable for other applications. And uh, I'm going to comment on this. I don't know how many of you are familiar with NMR, but uh, it's a tool for uh, basic studies in chemistry, in biology, in life science. You can characterize uh, small molecules. You can do analysis in food, in drinks, in uh, metabolites. You can study the structure of biomolecules, uh, more complex molecules. Uh, you can uh, uh, drive your biotechnology efforts to uh, prepare engineering, engineered molecules for uh, um, uh, pharmaceutical applications. And of course, you can study protein protein interaction, protein drug interaction into the cell. This is something new that comes up the last uh, few years. Uh, and of course, as I told you, it is uh, a tool in an emerging uh, field of molecular resonant diag diagnostics. You can uh, uh, do metabolomic studies. You can study the metabolic profile of an individual. And I would like to stress a project that is going uh, on around Europe to study born errors of metabolism of uh, uh, newborns. Uh, so you can see the complexity level. You can start for small molecules to uh, more complex molecules. And you can reach the information up uh, uh, to uh, organism level. Uh, in our efforts, because we also tried for several years to achieve this, uh, would like to convince the European Union that the uh, University of Patras is ready to accept and to exploit such kind, such kind of uh, huge investment. And uh, our efforts were based in a small equipment, you can see here, which is completely inadequate for uh, uh, large molecules like uh, proteins. But um, uh, the difference in cost with a, a modern uh, high field instrument is rather, uh, is, uh, rather high. Uh, this is the anticipated 700 megahertz, it's a uh, high field instrument. And uh, as I told you, the, uh, the difference in cost is huge because uh, um, the material of the magnets are um, uh, more expensive. And what you can get is the uh, sensitivity enhancement that you have with such kind of instrument, of instrument. And if you get some special equipment to this instrument, you can have uh, also 10, more than 10 times uh, uh, sensitivity to study small molecules or molecules that are not easy to be prepared or to be isolated. Um, of course, you can have a net effect of lowering the acquisition time of, for the data that you want to select. And um, I'm stressing here the uh, sensitivity enhancement due to the uh, innovative cryoprobe that uh, appeared something like 10 years ago. And you have, uh, you call the uh, special um, uh, mechanic and electronic part of the instrumentation. So you decrease the noise, you increase the signal, and you have uh, better results in your application. You also, uh, we also have been offered an auto sampler that makes the uh, um, instrument amenable to uh, industrial stakeholders. And of course, we have to take care of uh, money this year, this period. So we have uh, um, uh, liquid, uh, liquid nitrogen liquefier that makes the, uh, the, uh, the time for the, liquid, uh, the life for uh, liquid nitrogen up to 300 days. Uh, usually, you need uh, a refill every one or two weeks. Uh, um, our target was to, to have something new, something powerful to do our research, but also we had a vision. We had a vision because uh, at the area you can see of southern Eastern Europe, there was a gap in NMR instrumentation, and many people were interested to get to have something better. And you can see that in East Europe there were three instruments like this, so uh, we would like to fill this gap. And uh, our um, um, motivation and argument was that uh, we are using heavily, uh, we are in strong long-term collaboration with uh, European centers of NMR. And you can see here that Greece was uh, second in uh, uh, applications, research applications, to use NMR instrumentation in, uh, uh, in large-scale infrastructure of Florence in Italy. And uh, what is most important that, uh, was that uh, we're first in using the NMR, not only 
the high field NMR, but also the low field NMR, and that was an indication that we were uh, uh, lacking uh, this kind of instrumentation. Of course, the last years in Greece, the map has changed a little bit. There are many uh, institutions that are using NMR. For example, in, in Athens, there are many instruments spread all over the place. Of, uh, there are many institutions, there are many universities. In Crete, uh, um, in Ioanna, but this um, um, uh, these places are using NMR for uh, studies of small molecules. Patra is using uh, and it needs NMR for uh, large molecule proteins. And now we are going to have a unique instrumentation, which is also be supplemented with, by other uh, structural biology uh, instrumentation like uh, diffractometers, uh, TEM microscope, uh, confocal microscope, and others. Uh, the people that can use, the stakeholders that can use the, um, um, this instrumentation in uh, uh, Western Greece are biopharmaceutical companies. We have the Hospital University. Uh, our region is, uh, has a wonderful landscape with unique plants. Uh, we can have natural products. And uh, of course, at the research level, there are many uh, um, uh, collaborators from all around Greece that have uh, shown their uh, great interest, their strong interest, to use uh, our expertise in NMR of biomolecules in protein production, etc. At the European or regional and European level, you can see that uh, we have been, we are in collaboration with um, uh, regional, with other uh, countries in our region, like Cyprus, uh, Turkey, and uh, Bulgaria. So, uh, University of Patras can uh, act as a hub in uh, screening and optimizing protein samples bef before sent out to the large European facility centers. So we, we can assist on using this large-scale infrastructure in a cost-effective way. We can provide expertise to um, uh, these people that they don't uh, have an expertise in NMR spectroscopy, and we can collaborate with many large-scale infrastructure in Europe, not only uh, for NMR, but also for those that they are interested in using uh, X-ray, signotrons, large-scale infrastructure uh, signotrons to get um, uh, structure information about biomolecules. So uh, I can say that uh, after all, uh, uh, we have uh, created through the RECPOT uh, um, a center of excellence, which is uh, reached two uh, basic objectives. We have an ecosystem for innovation and we have a platform for development. We, have, we can uh, uh, do uh, curiosity-driven uh, driven research and we can provide uh, a solution in uh, a basis uh, um, of uh, um, industrial or other research institutions. We have created synergy be between research entities and uh, industries. And I think uh, uh, we can uh, fulfill the criteria as uh, set uh, in the horizon to uh, 2020 for a regional partner facility, which is uh, will be link, linked to uh, larger uh, infrastructure in uh, in Europe. And um, uh, I want to show you where is uh, where Patra is. Actually, this is the uh, um, uh, map of Greece. Patra is the capital of Peloponnese, a region in Greece. And if you uh, look closer. Patra uh, uh, has got a, um, an amazing uh, cultural environment because it's close to uh, historical places in a radius of 100 kilometers. You can see Olympia, you can see famous uh, place of Delphi, you can see Mycenae, uh, Epidavrus, and uh, in 200 kilometers is, uh, is Athens with the airport. And of course, it's a way, the seaway to Italy and to uh, West Europe. Uh, you are, of course, all invited to collaborate and to visit Patras and Greece, and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now, Gaetano Squadrito, please. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I am, uh, for me, it's an honor to be here to illustrate to you the, um, our project, the TRERA, that is an, an example of uh, Mediterranean um, partner um, countries' collaboration of the European uh, centers. Uh, in fact, RECPOT is not only a collaboration for the incoming uh, regions, but also for the Mediterranean partner countries, and there is a, um, a special section dedicated to, to those uh, partner countries. 
This kind of uh, rec protection is a mix between the, poten um, the increasing potentialities of the sump center in the incoming regions or neighboring regions and the cooperative uh, research uh, projects. In fact, in this case, there are involved uh, as actors some uh, center of excellence from Europe and this, some center of excellence from uh, Mediterranean partner countries that have a very good possibility to develop its own research. In our case, the center that is targeted is the CRTN, that is placed in Boris Edria, uh, close to Tunis, is a center that develops its activity in the field of renewable energies in uh, Tunisia. The consortium is formed by Polytech Nantes, that is uh, the um, engineer school of Nantes, uh, my institute in Messina that work on renewable energy, hydrogen and fuel cells since 1980, and Innovabic from Europe. Uh, Innovabic is a business innovation center and work uh, especially in the, in the field of collaboration between Mediterranean partner countries and the uh, Sicily institution. And uh, the target uh, center, as I say, is the CRTN that have very good potentialities, but have a kind of research that is mainly academic. This means that although the center is inserted in a technopole, its research is not addressed to the industry, is not addressed to the uh, transfer of the research to the industry, but is essentially a research that have um, a link with the local university and is uh, um, managed by a university just for the formation of new students, new research, not for the transfer to, uh, to the um, industries. And this is the main problem of uh, this center. In uh, our project, we uh, have as target uh, the enhancement of the capacities of this center. Uh, now, uh, one of the um, questions that many people posed to me in the past is why some excellent center of Europe must collaborate, must enhance the activity of a Mediterranean partner country center that could be in the future also a competitor for project or also for our industries. The answer is that if we like to have collaboration from Mediterranean partner country, especially for the energy supply in the future, all of you, uh, I think, know the Desert Tech project that have as uh, the aims to carry in Europe uh, energy uh, that is produced in the North Africa by renewable energy, we have to supply them also the technology, also the knowledge to manage these new technologies. So our dream is uh, really to create a long-term collaboration between uh, our centers before and also cent other center of Europe with Mediterranean partner countries to reinforce the uh, European Mediterranean partner country research collaboration. So this is the main activity uh, that we like to do in long time and uh, is not close to the uh, project uh, time. Uh, what we could uh, uh, gain for us the, in Europe, the advantage is essentially the visibility at the international level and the possibility to construct new research opportunities for our centers. Well, I don't go, okay. Uh, I just highlight the results, but uh, about, uh, between the results, I selected the results that are linked to some difficulties along the project development because I like to highlight what we have learned along uh, our project. The main results for us is the training for more than 20 researchers in CRTN. This training was not planned at the start of the project. In the, at the start of the project, we planned on the um, hiring and um, preparation of four or five people, no more. During the time, we uh, say that we have looked at the possibility to increase the number of people involved in the project. Now we have about 40 people that was involved in the project and by entering and exiting from the project along the, the time. Between them, 20 researchers was former between researcher and engineer, but we have we was uh, we has also some problems because uh, some of these people after the formation leave the project, leave also the CRTN 
to uh, have, uh, because I had uh, some uh, very good uh, proposal from the private industry in Tunisia and out of Tunisia for a, a very uh, interesting working position. This was a loose for the project, but was an advantage for Tunisia. So I don't know what is the balance, if the balance is more in, uh, positive for the project or for the government of Tunisia. The second uh, results was the increase of our network in Tunisia because two of the people that we prepared and selected during the project now are associated professors at SUS and Carthage University. These people maintained its link with uh, our project and today uh, have a very important part in, in our project, uh, are also in the organization of the conference. And uh, uh, this will allow us to have a network in Tunisia that now is not li uh, limited to CRTN, but, to, uh, but also in inserted SUS University and Carthage University, and will uh, give uh, us the uh, success of the sustainability of our project. Because this professor now started the research in hydrogen and fuel cell, also in the SUS at Carthage University, and collaborate with CRTN, so in the future, I, we will be sure that this, uh, this activity will be promoted and increased along the time. The other results that we all obtained with high difficulties uh, is the realization of new labs for fuel cell studies. We started with void rooms, three void rooms, and now we have three labs uh, where the people work. But we had a lot, a lot of problems uh, uh, with the administrative rules of Tunisia about the management of the instrumentation and uh, also uh, some kind of uh, um, uh, consumables coming from foreign countries, especially from USA, Canada, and Japan. This created to us uh, uh, some kind of problems because in some cases uh, we uh, needed about uh, six months to acquire something that in Europe could be acquired in um, two or three weeks. And the third result that, that for us is really, really important is the Mediterranean Hydrogen Technology Conference that is under organization in this moment and that will be take place in uh, September in Amamet. Uh, this, this conference is organized by our partner in Tunisia. What is really important is that we received the 150 abstract uh, not only from the um, partner countries in the project, that is the habits in Tunisia. When um, in Tunisia there are many international conferences that are organized, but usually involve a few countries. In, in our case, we have more than 12 countries involved in this conference. So, and this uh, was considered by the Tunisian minister a very, very important uh, project result. Um, moreover, we had some other um, uh, results, but I uh, invite you to look at our website and to the poster that is placed in the conference uh, in the main room of, uh, for coffee break to have more information about uh, our results. What I prefer to uh, highlight are uh, the problems and the lessons that we uh, learned about uh, this kind of project. First, we had a lot of problems in moving the people from Tunisia to Europe. This because the Tunisian uh, rules about the mission out of Tunisia are very, very limited. You must think that uh, a professor in Tunisia have uh, an allowance of only 100 euro for days for hotel, lunch, dinner, and all other, all our, uh, other uh, things he need, uh, taxi and so on. Uh, this for a professor, but we have to prepare uh, low-level researcher. This means uh, that for these people, we uh, had the necessity to uh, reduce the uh, cost to low than 60 euro for days, because this is the maximum reimbursement rate that the Tunisian uh, government give to these people, and this is a, bi a big problem for us. Another problem that we uh, had was the effect of, uh, of the revolution of the public administration in Tunisia. Our project started in 2010, January, 
And in the middle of the project, in, in January 2011, there was the revolution in Tunisia. This means that all the administrative uh, activity was totally blocked for about four months. In front of this, we was able to carry out some part of uh, the project without not so much problems, uh, working in uh, strong collaboration with the minister, because in our um, steering committee, we involved uh, um, the Ministry of Research, um, the Embassy of Italy, the Embassy of France, and so on. And this allowed us to overcome some problems. We realized that the one um, meeting of the steering committee just in February 2011, during the revolution, it was very hard to realize this. Finally, uh, managed instrumentation, as I, as I say before. Okay, I have to close. Uh, uh, the research collaboration with Mediterranean partner countries for us is profitable, I say before, because it's really important for our um, technology and for our visibility. We uh, ask for a demonization of EU administrative uh, rules with that of Tunisia, mainly Tunisia have to adapt them <laughs> to our uh, rules. And we also know that now that even if the political situation in, in the partner countries, in this case Tunisia, is unstable, the project could proceed if we put more effort in this project, obviously. Finally, along the project we uh, had a lot of problems, but uh, working together by comprehension and collaboration, we were able to overcome all these prob uh, problems. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Now the last speaker, Alexandro Miller, please. Uh, thank you for inviting me to give a presentation of one of the of one of uh, record project which was winning in the first call of this uh, nice. Uh, initiative of the European Commission. The project we, MIMO MEMS, won in uh, 2007. It, start, it started in 2000, 1st of May, May Day 2008 and finished successfully uh, one year ago, April 2011. And our, the coordinator of the session, uh, Dr. Stefan Weiss, was the project officer. Uh, I will uh, skip some slides because I was prepared for a little longer presentation. So, especially about the history, I will skip the slides. Uh, these are the main objectives of the project. Uh, as you know, the, the five uh, necessary measures which have to be developed, uh, know-how and experience exchange, <laughs> recruitment, development uh, and upgrade of equipment, workshop organizing and uh, dissemination and promotional activities are the main uh, uh, work mechanisms of the RECPOT call and they have, uh, the effect has to be the increase of the, uh, the visibility of the partner. This is the scheme of the Center of Excellence uh, and in our case two laboratories from IMT Bucharest, uh, Institute for Microtechnology Bucharest, the microwave laboratory with a nice European history and the uh, microphotonics laboratory have joined their efforts to create the consortium which uh, had to uh, uh, solve the problems to become a center of excellence in these topics. Uh, this has a scientific uh, uh, objective to be supported by this RECPOT pro project. Uh, three objectives are uh, real, uh, very new topics regarding microwave and millimeter wave. The other two topics are connected with development of optical MEMS devices. And I will finally present you also some very interesting and state-of-the-art results we have presented, we have obtained with the support of this project. Here it's, there will be two slides about our history. The microwave laboratory was involved, has developed the first European results in membrane supported circuits, a solution to, to develop millimeter wave circuits, uh, passive circuit elements uh, with low losses. It was the only solution, at least uh, 
technical solution. First results have been obtained in the United States. Uh, in Europe, we have obtained the first results a few months before the other two partners, which are uh, listed below uh, in Europe. And we have, we have been very courageous. We have proposed as coordinator a uh, European project. Here you have the partners. Uh, and we have been for a long time, I am to Bucharest, uh, we have been the first Eastern European country and for a long time the only Eastern European country which has coordinated an IST project. Uh, it was a MEMSOIF project which was nominated in 2002 for the Descartes Prize of the European Union. Here there are some of state-of-the-art results obtained in collaboration with one of the twinning partners for Saraclion. Uh, and it has also uh, continuation, this project, in the MEMSWAVE workshop, which is continuing, was first time organized by our project, and it's continued also this year. The cluster meeting in RF of the EU will take place together with the MEMSWAVE workshop at the 12th edition. Then we have been involved in other European projects with other very nice results, and let's go to the main objectives of the MIMO MEMS projects uh, and how we have uh, developed them. First of all, uh, the exchange of know-how and the experience with the twinning partners. In this case, the two twinning partners were, have been last CNRS to lose with a very nice experience in uh, silicon-based RF uh, millimeter waves and microsystems and for Heraklion. With both of them, we, we had uh, strongly cooperation also before, but non-officialized. And uh, it, at the first call, this uh, it was have been uh, it was it was not imposed. It was imposed only one twinning partner. We have proposed two. Of course, we have developed during the project also cooperation with other partners. Here we have some. Uh, state-of-the-art results obtained together with these partners in the topic of uh, acoustic device based on gallium nitride micromachining. We have obtained the first F-bar structures and then we have obtained uh, F-bar structures, an acoustic device working up to 6.3 gigs, uh, working at 6.3 gigs uh, and it's the first on gallium nitride published in electron device letter, the top journal in electron devices in 2009 with the support of this project. Let's say work together was supported by the RECPOT project. And then we have developed uh, so devices working at five gigs. Uh, also state-of-the-art results published in the same in the same electron device letters, uh, which is a top journal in, in, in the electronic devices. Uh, and uh, these results will be used in a project we won after. These are other uh, very nice results published and uh, state-of-the-art results obtained with, together with Last Toulouse and uh, again with Force Heraklion, a very nice center in uh, gallium arsenide technology. I still have a few minutes. Uh, also have developed five seconds. Uh, a gallium nitride-based uh, MSM photodetector on a membrane in cooperation, which is also a nice result, published <coughs> and it was submitted during the life of the project and published later, which is also a top result. And let's go to the other results of the project. Here are the results obtained in, opto in uh, microphotonics. I'm an expert in the other topics, so I will not insist about them. Another very important objective of the, this project was uh, to hire uh, high educated personnel. It was not officially stated because it's a discrimination, but it was better to be from the Romanian diaspora. And we succeeded to hire two guys from the diaspora, uh, Dr. Pavelescu, who has a PhD at uh, and worked at Castle, and uh, Dr. Mihaela Karp, which uh, has her PhD in Singapore. And then I found also, because I comes also a very uh, third uh, appliance from which has 
finished in Bucharest. We have proposed two, but we employed three in the same money. <laughs> so we considered it as, as a success, and it was one of the most difficult tasks of the project. I was really afraid that it will be very difficult to hire postdocs in Romania, but we succeeded. Uh, another success of the project was uh, that we could upgrade our uh, research equipment. I have to notice that it was also an important effort of the national authorities in the 2006-2008 years when I hear unofficially that it, they put in research about 0.8 billion uh, euros. So we, we had, we, we uh, in the Romanian capacities program, we, we had the 65 uh, equipment for measuring on wafer uh, as parameters. So with the uh, RecPod project, we upgraded it to 110 gigahertz, which is now, I think, uh, our lab is in a very good position. Also, we uh, bought a frequency synthesizer and a spectrum analyzer up to 110 gigahertz with RecPod money and Romanian money. And this was a, a nice, uh, uh, our laboratory is now a real excellent laboratory microwave. The top is 220 now. Understand? And here is the equipment we have procured, <coughs> photos of the equipment. Uh, here are the dissemination actions, three uh, workshops, one strategic workshop <laughs> to the many invited people, which uh, uh, had, had as the topic the development of RF MEMS technology. Here are the scientific results. I see, think that for a group for 17 people, I think 11 ISI paper in high rank journals and 25 conference papers, it's a very nice results. Here there are the stages which have been very cheap, 38 total stages from abroad to Romania, 83 from Romania abroad, but here it's included also the work to common FP7 project. A common laboratory, okay, which was with the two partners. I think the most important result, and this will, con will ensure the continuity, and ensure the continuity of the My Moment Center, is our very strong activity in participating to write project. We had 20 submissions and six winning projects. The most important have been two IPs which started six months, seven months ago, Smart Power and Nanotech coordinated by an industrial partner, Thales TRT, and with very interesting partners. And here, we, our target in smart power, for instance, is to develop these so devices at five gigs to make them as nice temperature sensors. Uh, there are uh, two Aeronet proposals and two ENIAC proposals, which we won, let's say, with the support in writing them, in doing the work together, in, uh, with of this My Moments project. Here are the founts which we have uh, used in this project. As you can see, exactly 50%, the maximum uh, percentage allow, which have been allowed have been used for equipment upgrading, and I think it is one of the good points. The conclusions, in my opinion, this project was a real success and uh, makes us, for the, let's say for the first time, in the history of our lab, to can survive now without national money. <laughs> I, we don't want this, but <laughs> thank you for your attention.